Brazil refuses U.S. request to extradite alleged Russian spy. Brazilian authorities have rejected a U.S. extradition request for Sergei Vladimirovich Cherkasov, an alleged Russian spy accused of spying on Americans before Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Instead, Brazil will send him to Russia, where he is accused of drug trafficking. Cherkasov entered the U.S. under a false identity in 2018 and was arrested in Brazil upon his return in 2022. He will first serve a jail term in Brazil for a forgery conviction before being extradited to Russia. The Biden administration had hoped to use Cherkasov as a potential candidate for a prisoner swap with Russia to secure the release of two Americans wrongfully detained in Russia. Wagner ready to increase Africa presence, Prigazin tells local media. Yevgeny Prigazin, the leader of the Wagner mercenary group, stated in an audio interview that his group is ready to increase its presence in Africa. Wagner has been involved in conflicts in Ukraine and has recently been active in the Central African Republic, CR. Prigazin confirmed that new Wagner forces have arrived in CAR ahead of a constitutional referendum. Western governments, including the United States and France, have expressed concern over Wagner's activities in Africa, accusing the group of committing atrocities. However, Prigazin denies these accusations, stating that Wagner's actions are lawful and beneficial to the countries it operates in and their relations with Russia. U.S. will not invite sanctioned Hong Kong leader to APEC. The United States will not invite Hong Kong's chief executive, John Lee, who is under U.S. sanctions, to the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC, summit in San Francisco in November. Lee was placed under sanctions in 2020 due to his role in implementing a controversial national security law in Hong Kong. Lawmakers, including Senator Marco Rubio, had urged the U.S. State Department to bar Lee from the event. The decision was confirmed by congressional aides, and the State Department stated that all delegations' participation in APEC events will be in accordance with U.S. laws and regulations. China's embassy in Washington expressed strong opposition to the U.S. decision, and the APEC summit could be a potential venue for bilateral talks between President Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping to improve relations. U.S. announces Taiwan weapons package worth up to $345 million. The United States has announced a Taiwan weapons aid package worth up to $345 million, which is likely to anger China. The package was authorized by Congress and includes weapons aid for Taiwan, a country that rejects Chinese sovereignty claims. The specific details of the arms in the package were not publicly disclosed. It was previously expected to include four unarmed MQ-9A reconnaissance drones, but their inclusion might depend on resolving issues related to the drone's advanced equipment. Taiwan's defense ministry expressed gratitude for the U.S. commitment but did not comment on the package details. China views Taiwan as its territory and has increased military pressure on the island. The U.S. and its allies aim to speed up the delivery of weapons to Taiwan to help it defend itself. The Presidential Drawdown Authority is used to expedite security assistance to Taiwan. North Korea's Kim vows to boost cooperation with China to new high. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un met with a Chinese delegation in Pyongyang to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the end of the Korean War. During the meeting, Kim pledged to strengthen relations between North Korea and China to a new high. The Chinese delegation, led by Communist Party Politburo member Li Hongzhong, was the first to visit North Korea since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. The meeting occurred after Russian and Chinese officials joined Kim for a military parade showcasing North Korea's newest nuclear-capable missiles and attack drones. Russia and China have opposed additional sanctions on North Korea, and the U.S. and South Korean navies conducted joint anti-submarine exercises in response to North Korean provocations. The exercise aimed to counter North Korea's evolving missile threats. Most Chinese Americans and other Asian Americans are unhappy with China, poll shows. A national survey conducted by the Pew Research Center found that Asian Americans generally have positive views of their ancestral homelands, except for Chinese Americans who have mixed views of mainland China. Only 41% of Chinese Americans hold favorable views of China, while 60% of Vietnamese Americans feel positively about Vietnam. Many Chinese Americans, who are foreign-born, left China due to authoritarian regimes and human rights issues. Religious beliefs, with around 40% of Chinese Americans being Christian, and the Chinese government's policies also influence their views. Chinese Americans are more likely to favor Taiwan, with over 60% viewing it favorably.
The survey also revealed that developed Asian nations are viewed more favorably than those still developing by Asian Americans. President Biden to host the leaders of Japan and South Korea for an August summit at Camp David. President Joe Biden will host a summit at Camp David on August 18 with the leaders of Japan and South Korea, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and South Korean President Yoon suk yeol respectively. The meeting signifies the improving relations between Japan and South Korea as they seek to overcome historical tensions and build cooperation. The leaders will discuss expanding trilateral cooperation across the Indo-Pacific region, addressing the threat from North Korea, and enhancing ties with the Association of Southeast Asian Nations and the Pacific Islands. The invitation came after a brief meeting at the Group of Seven Summit in May. The Biden administration aims to strengthen economic and defense ties between Japan and South Korea to counter China's assertiveness and support Ukraine in its conflict with Russia. Kim Jong-un just showed off two new North Korean aircraft that look shockingly similar to U.S. military drones. North Korea showcased two new aircraft during a military parade, resembling U.S. military drones, the MQ-9 Reaper and the RQ-4 Global Hawk. These developments demonstrate Kim Jong-un's efforts to elevate the country's drone program and possibly emulate the U.S. However, details about the capabilities of the new systems remain unclear. The parade marked 70 years since the Korean War armistice and was attended by Chinese and Russian delegations amid heightened tensions on the Korean peninsula. North Korea's solid-fueled Hwasong-18 intercontinental ballistic missile, ICBM, was also displayed, signaling the country's ongoing commitment to its weapons development program. U.S. Secretary of State tells Australia that WikiLeaks founder is accused of very serious crime. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken disagreed with Australia's request to end the prosecution of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. The Australian Labour Party government has been urging the U.S. to drop charges against Assange, who has been fighting extradition for over four years. The case has become a test of Australia's influence with the Biden administration. Assange is facing serious criminal charges in the U.S. for publishing classified documents, and Australia wants the matter to be resolved. The U.S. accuses him of helping Chelsea Manning steal classified information that put lives at risk. Australia points to a disconnect between the treatment of Assange and Manning, who had her sentence commuted by former President Barack Obama. U.S. to help Australia develop guided missiles by 2025. The U.S. will assist Australia in producing guided multiple launch rocket systems by 2025, as announced by Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin during the Australia-U.S. Ministerial Osman, Dialogue. The two countries are strengthening their military ties amid concerns about China's assertive actions in the Indo-Pacific region. The talks also focused on defending the international rules-based order, opposing China's disruptions to freedom of navigation, and addressing tensions in the Taiwan Straits. The dialogue comes as Australia and the US conduct joint military exercises, including Talisman Sabre War Games, though they were temporarily suspended due to a helicopter crash. Additionally, the U.S. expressed concerns to China about potential technology transfers to Russia during the conflict in Ukraine. Ukraine's armed forces to be in Crimea soon, Defense Intelligence Chief. Kirill Budinov, Chief of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine, has stated that the Ukrainian military will soon be able to liberate Russian-occupied Crimea. When asked about the exact date of entry into Crimea, he replied, soon. Budinov also dismissed the threat from Wagnites in Belarus, stating that it does not scare the Ukrainian defense forces. He mentioned that there has been no increase in the number of Russian occupation troops, but their constant mobilization allows them to replenish losses. In a previous statement in September 2022, Budinov had predicted that Ukraine would retake Crimea by the end of spring 2023. Russia has not offered UN World Food Program free grain. According to the United Nations World Food Program, WFP, Deputy Chief, Russia has not offered any free grain to the WFP, despite Russian President Vladimir Putin's recent claim that Moscow could replace Ukrainian grain exports to Africa and gift tens of thousands of tons of grain to six countries. The WFP had been relying on the Black Sea Export Pact with Ukraine to purchase and ship grain for food aid to countries like Afghanistan, Djibouti, Ethiopia, Kenya, Somalia, Sudan, and Yemen. With the pact terminated, the WFP will have to seek alternative sources, which may be more costly and result in longer lead times for food aid delivery. The end of the deal has also contributed to a spike in global wheat prices. 
The UFO congressional hearing was insulting to U.S. employees, a top Pentagon official says. Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, the head of the Pentagon's All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, ARO, has criticized the congressional hearing on UFOs, calling the claims insulting to defense and intelligence community officers investigating UFO sightings. He specifically accused retired Air Force Major David Grush, a key witness, of not cooperating with the official U.S. government investigation. Grush testified about a secretive program to collect and reverse engineer UFOs, including non human biologics. Kirkpatrick denied finding credible evidence to support these claims and dismissed allegations of retaliation or harm to individuals providing information about UFOs. He also stated that the central source of the allegations, likely Grush, refused to speak with Aro. The Pentagon spokeswoman denied other allegations made by Grush and stated that there is no verifiable evidence of reverse engineering extraterrestrial materials. Myanmar's Aung San Suu Kyi moved from prison, party official. Aung San Suu Kyi, the ousted civilian leader of Myanmar, has been moved from prison to a high-level venue compound. She was detained after the military coup in February 2021 and has been sentenced to 33 years in jail on various charges. Concerns have been raised about her health, and she has been moved several times since her detention. Despite her popularity in Myanmar, her image was tarnished by her power-sharing deal with the military and her lack of support for the Rohingya minority. The military cited alleged voter fraud as the reason for the coup, but the elections were previously considered free and fair by international observers. Since the coup, thousands of people have been killed in the country. Japan presses Sri Lanka to secure China debt deal. Japan has urged Sri Lanka to accelerate its debt restructuring process, including negotiations with its biggest creditor, China, to stabilize its economy after a severe crisis. While Japan and India, the other major creditors, have supported a plan to delay repayments on loans, China has been hesitant to agree to a debt deferral and offered additional loans instead. This delay held up a $2.9 billion IMF bailout for Sri Lanka. Resolving Sri Lanka's debt burden is crucial to unlock further funding for the country. Japan expressed concerns about China's infrastructure projects in Sri Lanka and the region, as they do not meet international finance standards. Sri Lanka faced cash shortages and defaulted on foreign debt, leading to protests and the resignation of its president in 2022. Li Mengchu, Taiwan businessman accused of spying in China is freed. Li Mengchu, a Taiwanese businessman, has returned to freedom after spending over 1,400 days in China. He was arrested in 2019 for taking photos of police officers in Shenzhen during the pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong. He was accused of espionage and stealing state secrets, leading to his imprisonment and a deprivation of political rights, which included an exit ban. Mr. Li denies the charges and says he was only a curious passerby. His Taiwanese identity may have been a factor in the political implications of his case amid tensions between China and Taiwan. After his release, he faced difficulties leaving China and was isolated from his family and business associates. He is now in Japan, planning to recover before returning to Taiwan. China hopes France can help take heat out of relations with EU. During a meeting in Beijing, Chinese Vice Premier He Lefeng expressed hope that France could stabilize EU-China relations. China is eager to deepen cooperation with France in finance, science, and technological innovation. Unlike China's cautious talks with the US, discussions with France focused on reinforcing economic and financial ties. French firms are concerned about getting caught in the rivalry between China and the US, making cooperation with China more important. The two countries aim to work together on green initiatives, value chain reorganization, and technological advancements. French companies seek better market access in various industries. The meeting signals a positive step towards addressing global challenges and fostering stability amid uncertainties.